So if you remember back to photo one class, we did those light painting projects where we set up the cameras, put on a really, really long shutter speed, and then danced around with some lights and stuff to try to get, um, you know, those paintings, those drawings in the sky. There are some ways you can do it with your iPhone. I'm gonna go through a couple ways, and then I'm gonna remind you how to do it with an actual camera as well. Uh, I'm gonna be using my uh, iPhone holder here. It's by a company called WooHot. It's actually pretty cool. You just kind of snap your phone in there and then tighten it down um, to make sure that it's held in there. Works really well. Uh, what can you do if you don't have something like this? So a reminder guys, if you don't have a tripod at your disposal, you can use one of these binder clips. Okay, the problem is they do have a little bit of pressure on them. Um, so if your screen is cracked, you may not want to do it. But another thing that I like to do with them is take some tape I prefer like a thicker tape, like duct tape or something. This is really thick tape, by the way. Um, and I'm gonna rip off just a couple little pieces here. And then, ooh, stuff is sticky. I like to put it along the edge of this just so that there's like no chance it's gonna really scratch up my phone screen. Okay, so some sort of cushion works well for that. Then all you do is take your phone snap it on there. If you have a really thick case, you might want to take it off. And then if you just kind of fold these legs out, you know, you've got yourself a little mini tripod. Um, another thing you can do is when you're in the camera, um, if you have the old wired headphones, you know, the ones that have the up and down volume button, if you have those, you can take the volume button and if you watch on the phone, every time I press it, it snaps a picture. So once you get this set up wherever you want it to be, you know, just press the button and it'll be like a remote control and that way you don't have to worry about moving your camera around too much. For our first experiment with light painting, we're gonna just be using the onboard camera um, inside of uh, your iPhone. And if you don't know where live photo is, it's this little button here. Make sure live photo is turned on. I'm also going to turn on a timer for 10 seconds, okay? Now, problem with live photo, it records everything. Um, it tends to uh, pick up the brightness a little bit more than you want it to, so make sure that you have like a dark area. Like right here, you can see I'm kind of like, I got a whitish background back there. It's probably not gonna help me very much. Um, but the timer's kind of cool because it'll give you um, a little bit of time to get in position and do all your stuff. Uh, what it does is it actually keeps taking photos while you're moving around and then it blends them all together. So let me show you. Uh, I've got the timer, so I've got a little bit of time to get into position. I'm gonna go turn the light off over here. And then just really quick, I'm just gonna kinda move across the scene here. Okay. Now, that wasn't super exciting, but the reason I did it so quickly is because you only get um, about three seconds to do a live photo. And now to blend it together, you click back on here, you swipe up on the picture and you click on the long exposure button. And you can kind of see the beginning of a light trail there. Again, not the most ideal way to do it. What live um, image works better for is like nature photos. So here in my edge of my neighborhood, we've got this like drain pipe. Okay? If I do a live photo with that and then, you know, let it record the water. When I go back to the water and swipe up, okay, go back down to long exposure and get it to blend all those images together. What it gives me is this really cool kind of like, you know, flowing kind of cottony looking um, water, which is really cool. Let's try it again. I'm trying to get my composition better using the grid to do my rule of thirds there. Okay, take the photo, hold the camera relatively steady. That's also important. And then once again, you go back to the image, swipe up, scroll over to long exposure, and then you can see my second attempt at it. Um, it's actually kind of cool. Looks, you know, nice and flowing, and uh, just kind of a neat way to do that. So that would be a cool way to experiment with some live exposures. A better way to do it is if you go to the App Store on your phone and you type in um, Shutter Cam. Shutter Cam is, or Slow Shutter Cam I should say. Slow Shutter Cam is an app where it lets you kind of control 
uh, a little bit more of the um, shutter speed in your camera. Okay, so it looks like this. Let's see, put the app open up here. It's searching for it. Give it a second. Um, it's this one with the purple icon right here. I already have it open. So a couple things I can do with this. Um, let's see. I can put a timer on. So if I click on these three bars up here, I can put a 10 second timer on. That's good. And then down here, if I click on the gear, I can put it on light trace. I turn the light sensitivity all the way down and I've got it set for about eight seconds. Okay. Um, it tends to be really, really sensitive to light. So let's try it and see what it does here. Okay. And I'm just going to count to 10 because it doesn't really give you a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just going to kind of like do spirals here. Again, it tends to be super sensitive because the way that these phones work is their chip that tends to try to get a properly exposed picture instead of, um, you know, something else. So let's see what we got out of that picture there. Looks like we got complete darkness. Anything? I don't see much of anything there, so I'm going to clear that one. And I'm going to try this again. Let's turn the um, light sensitivity up just a little bit. Okay. Good. Get out of there. And then let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So I'm just doing a set of spirals here. I've got my um, light on my iPhone set to dim. Well, let's see if this one did. All right, a little better. You can kind of see the beginning of the trails there. Now, my room that I'm doing this in right here was kind of had some light coming in. It was early in the morning and the sun was kind of up. Um, so this will work better in pure darkness. But here is a clip from a video on YouTube um, where the guy got much better results using this slow shutter cam app than I did. And the link to this video is inside the Google Drive. If you go into the folder, go to the Files folder. Inside of there, I have links to all sorts of different uh, YouTube videos so you can check them out and get some more information. So the way I actually prefer to do these light paintings is with a real camera. Even if you have a point and shoot, there should be a way you can control the shutter. And with mine here, I'm gonna go out a live view here. Um, you can see I've got a shutter speed. I can set it to 15 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is I want. Um, and then I can set the ISO and I also uh, currently have a timer set up here as well. And what you want to do is you want to get it in position and you want to focus it and then turn the autofocus off on my camera. It's on the side of the lens. Turn that autofocus off. I also have a 10 second timer on there. So I'm going to start it and then get into position and try a real simple kind of light painting. Okay. So I'm just going to make some spirals, see what that does here. Again, it's a pretty long exposure. I'm just going to keep going off the edge. Okay, and let's see what we got. And there you have it, some simple exposures. And you can get fancy. You can try to do some more interesting things here. I'm going to try one more here. C O V I D dot the I. Let's see if that works. There you go. COVID. <laughs> All right. So have fun. Experiment with those other apps. Um, you probably can get some interesting results. Again, you, um, We'll probably have a better better luck with nature photos using the slow shutter speed if you're using live um, live image 
but try that slow cam experiment with it. It'll take some trial and error to get it to work properly.